Hello and welcome to the Limit Kickback, where we talk anything and everything entertainment. I am, of course, your host, Zeke Clamon, and this is Mr. Elijah George. Hello. Elijah, how you doing, man? Doing well. What's up, Zeke? I'm doing really I'm back at it again. Yep, back at it again. It's been a while. We uh we actually did this in podcast form on SoundCloud for how many months? Six? Multiple months. A, a lot of months. We did do a top ten movie franchises, and then we just did movie news. And now it's like it just feels like old times, but now we have a giant green background and in camera. Don't she's touch nice. Don't touch her. Don't she's touch her. nice. She's she's very classy. Don't touch her, okay? Don't even look at her. <laughs> Draven changed the whole background so he just looks weird. <laughs> All right. Make me, make me looking at a uh, at a lizard. It's on the wall. It's crawling around. <laughs> it's crawling around. That's what I mean. Oh man, Draven's gonna hate us. All right. So we got a few. Uh, this is how it works. We got a few pieces of news that we're gonna discuss, and uh, we're just fans who like to discuss these things and just talk about it and what we think might happen. Do we think this is the best plan? All of that. We are not professionals. So I want to make that. Very known right off the bat. Uh, we're just two guys who enjoy talking about movie news and what we think about it. All right. So first off, Elijah, um, how big of a fan are you of the uh, Last of Us um, video game? I never played them. I know. I know about them. Never played them though. Never. You know, they're PS4 exclusive. Oh yeah, you're a PC person. You're about buddy. that PC. Well, I am a PlayStation person, and The Last of Us is one of the few games that I truly enjoy. Um, I enjoy both of them. I know the second one gets a lot of hate, <laughs> but to me, I think it's just as good. If you just take the movie itself, the, the cutscene movies, I think it's one of the best piece of uh, narrative storytelling that I have ever seen. Uh, same with the first one, but I really do think the second one's story is a lot better, but the first gameplay is a lot better to me personally. But... They are going to make a TV series about it. I think it's the best route to go. I think a movie would have really cramped out a lot of the storytelling. Uh, the first, the, a TV series is the best way to go for for me personally, besides a movie. And there's been a three guarantees in life, uh, as another uh, film pundit would say, is that there are three guarantees to life. Death, taxes, and video game entertainment sucks. That's not an actual game. Because, you know, you want to play the game. You don't want to watch the game. <laughs> um, and they are going to make a TV series out of it. And I think Last of Us is one of the few that can actually make it. Along with Uncharted that's coming very soon to, uh, to theaters next year. And they finally got their stars. And it's uh, Pedro Pascal, who is the Mandalorian. <laughs> and this TV show, The Mandalorian. And a Bella Ramsey, who starred in Game of Thrones and who was one of my favorite uh, characters in the show, personally to me. I think they could have used her a lot more than what they did, but hey, it's what it is. I think this is terrific casting. I think uh, it really just comes down to writing at this point to me personally. Elijah, you're hearing about this, the talent behind it. You know the story of Last of Us, at least, and you heard the praise yeah. one game of the year all the time. What yeah, for the, like, for the most part, uh, you know, Last of Us had a really good, I mean, it's like critically acclaimed. Everybody loved the story of Last of Us. Part two, you know, I, I didn't hear as much about it. They're mostly just, there were a lot of, like, mild things that, you know, all those ladies got upset about and whatnot. But it's one of those things that is, like, the gameplay wasn't the focus of the game. In that case, it was more the storytelling. It was one of those really nice stories that, um, you know, it touched a lot of people. Yeah. Um, and it made, it, you can make people cry with your story telling that's you're doing something well yeah you are and there are a lot of people doing that um and so yeah i mean if you keep that kind of writing going you lose the interactiveness of the story so you you would have to find some way to kind of make up for that bring that back in a way but i i think it would translate really well to film me too I, and especially in tv form too yeah especially if this goes like 12 or 15 episodes. I, I think 10 will probably be too short. We need to go to like 12. Yeah. I mean, it's one of those things you look up on YouTube and it's like Last of Us, all cutscenes. And then it's just like yeah, three hours of just that. And, you know, you look at the views and it's like, people just want to watch that. Yeah, it, it's really good. And, you know, you, you lose the repetitiveness of the gameplay too. Like, you can actually 
skip over some stuff too and all that stuff. So that's our thoughts on it, guys. Uh, what are your thoughts on it? Please leave a comment down below. All right, next up, uh, as you know, Disney bought Fox. <laughs> uh, what was it? A few years ago. I want to say two, but maybe yeah, longer than that. Maybe longer than that. Uh, and a lot of people were really excited because, you know, the X-Men were coming to the Avengers. I was one of the few that was like, no, let's keep them spread out because then we get more superhero movies. Now everything's going to be very limited. <laughs> uh, that, that's just my thoughts on it. Um, but when you buy a company, some jobs are at stake. And one of those jobs was an animation studio called Blue Sky. Now, Disney already owns two of the biggest ones. Disney Animated Studios and Pixar. Would it be a little bit redundant to keep Blue Sky? I don't know. They canceled Blue Sky Studios, which bosses Ice Age. Um, can you make, think of any others? I know Ice Age was the big one. I think there was one more big one that I can't remember off the top of my head. Ice Age was the big one, and like you were saying earlier, the the spy, the spies in disguise the spies was the last the one. The spies in disguise was the last one, and it didn't do well at the box office. Which was part of Disney going, yeah, no, this just ain't gonna work. We'll, we'll, we got really good stuff going with Pixar and in our own animated studios. There's no need to keep the third one. Uh, so I don't blame Disney. It's never a good time when you when people lose their jobs, but. As a business wise, I can't blame them. And honestly, who's really looking forward to another Ice Age movie? And also, you could just reboot it and do it in that Disney animation. Might hurt it, might not. Elijah, you hearing this? What are your thoughts on Disney buying Fox in general and hearing this news? Disney buying Fox was that's an I mean that's we've kind of seen the effects of that. We've gotten, you know, uh our announcements for yeah, you know, different movies coming out, whatnot. I, yeah. I'm not sure that was a bad decision at all. Yeah. You know, you get Fox with your Disney Plus Prime subscription now, whatever <laughs> they're doing. Um, I don't know. I, I, Blue Skies was one of those companies that, like you said, I watched it as a kid. And then you get older, and you're just like, I don't remember anything they've made aside from Ice Age. It's not just that. It's just the jokes are just like, yeah, they're made for a 12-year-old. Like, I mean... I think I got to Ice Age 3, and I was, and that's when I was like, okay, I'm getting too old for this. Me, personally. Like, I like Ice Age 1. I think Ice Age 2 is better than the first one. But then Ice Age 3, I don't even remember what it was. I just remember jokes being like, huh, it's a fart joke. Yeah, that, was, that was like the, uh, that was the Ice Age, or not the Ice Age, it was like the thawing age, right? All yeah. the starts melting. Cotton and Drift or something like that? Yeah. Or was it Dawn of the Dinosaurs? It was one of those. Um, but yeah, so... That's our thoughts on Blue Skies. We, we've, I will say, Scrat is probably the best thing to come out of Blue Skies. Yeah. I, I will take a lot of short films with that little guy. Just that little squirrel, man. He touched our hearts. You know what? We do need another Ice Age movie. We, we, he needs to get the acorn. I don't think he ever got it. <laughs> I don't think he ever did. I don't want him to either. You don't want him to get the acorn? Absolutely not. What's wrong with the acorn? I mean, man. Once he gets the acorn, you know, his saga's over. Yeah, that's, we need that final Iron Age movie. He gets the acorn, it wraps up, and we go on. I want, I want Scrat to be the new Dragon Ball. <laughs> oh my god. Alright. I want 20 years of Scrat. <laughs> 20 years of Scrat. Trying to find an acorn. Alright, that's One Piece. <laughs> Anyways, uh, we're going to stick with Disney for a little bit. And there's... They hit a milestone. They recently hit 95 million subscribers, and with that, they have hit their net worth. I cannot remember the top, the money off the top of my head. My notes just blacked out on these, and there's no way for me to get back to them unless I stand. Anyway, uh, <laughs> they hit 95 million uh, subscribers, and that hit a big profit. And that that net profit was their goal for year five. They did it all in year one. <laughs> uh, Call me shocked because honestly, Disney Plus didn't really do much. They had some good original content. I think the High School the Musical, the musical, the series, uh, was actually pretty decent for what it was. Um, the Mandalorian, of course, was really the show that was carrying them that whole first year. And we were supposed to get Falcon and Winter Soldier and all these other shows, but I can't say the uh, what happened out loud because then I get demonetized for some reason. Um, <laughs> And then the, they had to stop shooting 
And now we're starting to get that in year two. We got Mandalorian season two, which was really good. <laughs> really good. good. And WandaVision, which is I'm really enjoying. You have not seen it. I have yet to see it. You are catching up. Uh, so, and they have that amazing library. And just more original stuff is starting to come. I see them really carrying over. They might pass Netflix pretty soon. Elijah, what are your thoughts? I I mean, the only issue right now is just, you know, with their competition with Netflix, it's like the amount of shows Netflix puts out is drastically higher than what Disney Plus is doing right now. Yeah. Um, but I mean, but I think the reason they made so much, it's just, it's the accessibility. Everybody loves Disney. You know, I, I can't think of anybody who's not enjoyed a Disney movie. Like, at least one. Yeah. You've got the Avengers, you've got all of... Um, Star Wars. Yeah, you've got all of Star Wars, you've got all of their classics. All the all of Disney classic movies. Uh, Mickey Mouse. I mean, everybody has interacted with Disney at this point. Um, so I think part of it is just, with Disney+, Plus, you've got accessibility to all the stuff that you grown up with to all the stuff that you enjoy and it's just right there you just sit them down and you're like you know i just want to want to watch star wars you know you don't have to go find whatever copy of it you have you know all your disney stuff especially with the um uh, the mcu um all of that stuff being together you know trying to find hundreds of different movies it feels like you know, to watch, to do your month, your yearly marathon of that. <laughs> now it's all just together, right there in this one little service for the most part. Well, they're not all there yet. Like there are some, the some contracts still waiting to be discussed, and another company that owns one of the characters. Um, but yeah. So, do you believe that? That brings me to my next question: Is that you believe what brought Disney this far to get this quick? Because again, Disney. Uh, profit holders were thinking, all right, in five years we get to nine, 95 million and have this and have this big profit. They did it in year one. So you're thinking the library alone did that, not necessarily the new shows of The Mandalorian and WandaVision, all these shows that are about to come. I think those had a bit of an impact. But I mean, you walk into like, you walk into my house and we've always got, I mean, like half the time we got just some random old Disney movie playing. You know, we watched Princess and the Frog a couple weeks ago. Beauty and the Beast was on. Ariel. Sorry, Little Mermaid. <laughs> all, all of those, you know, you just... I think it's more... It's, it's a much more family-friendly platform than, mm -hmm. like, Netflix was, for, per se. Because a lot of Netflix shows are more adult. Yeah. For the most part. Whereas Disney, like I said, you grew up with it. It's, it's really family-friendly, and they try to keep it that way with a lot of their stuff. All right, so let's play a little game here. Let's play guess, because I don't think it's a matter of if. I think it's more of a matter of when Disney is going to take over as the number one streaming service at some point. It may not be the best one. Um, I still think Netflix is probably better overall. Netflix, uh, Disney is not even second. I think Disney might be third for me right now, because I think, it, to me, it goes Netflix, HBO Max, and then it's Disney+. Plus. Um, but how long do you think until Disney Plus takes over? Are you thinking a year, maybe six months, two years, three years? Takes over in terms of? As the number one streaming service, like no, most subscribers. Most subscribers. I would, I'm going to guess, we're going to start slowing down a little bit because you got 95 million. I mean, how much more of a spike can you get at this point? I still don't think they're available completely around the world yet. That one, I, I think there's still some markets that they have not opened up yet. And so I'm going to say maybe three years before they pass Netflix, but I wouldn't be surprised if it does take a year. I'm just saying to me, if I had to bet money on it, if I had 20 bucks, I'm guessing three. What are your thoughts? Well, part of the issue is just that Netflix and Disney Plus, it's not like, you know, subscribing to one, you can basically just ignore the other. The content on them is so different that it's, I think that there's going to be a lot of shared subscriptions, that kind of thing. You, you know, you're going to have a lot of people who are just like, well, oh, I want to watch all my Disney Plus stuff, but I also like these Netflix shows because they're, you know, they're always cycling out new stuff. Every five minutes. Yeah. I mean, it's, <laughs> honestly, it's, it's nice. And then you're just like, 
why not just subscribe to both? And so you're gonna, I think you're gonna have, yeah, and you currently do have a lot of that going on right now. The amount of people who exclusively want to watch Disney movies, you know, if you're sitting there streaming a bunch of stuff and the only thing you want to watch is stuff that Disney has put out, uh, honestly, I think it's pretty low. I think it'll take a while for them to beat out Netflix. But do you think it's possible then? Do you think it's going to happen? I guess that's my main question then. Because I think it's inevitable that's going to happen. But you're saying, no, there's some doubt. If they keep it up how they are doing it, and Disney Plus is just Disney Plus, and it's just Disney, I... It feels unlikely. So you're saying they need to get some I adult think, content in there a little bit? Maybe not even adult content, but they need stuff that... I mean, they need to like partner with somebody else. They need to start getting some other shows on their platform. Yeah. Yeah, because right now it's what, just Pixar, Marvel, Star Wars, and the National Geographic Channel, and of course, Classic Disney. Exactly. That's it, yeah. I guess they do need one more person, but also Disney owns Hulu as well, so I guess they're just doing fine. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if they, if, I mean, if they had like a, do they have a bundle where you just like bundle Disney? Yeah, Hulu? you bundle Disney, Hulu, if they just ESPN. merge, like if they merged Hulu into Disney, like they would. They blow it out. It'll of the be water. over. The yeah. contest will be over. I think so, but I think Disney should consider that. But I don't know. What do you guys think? Do y'all think Disney and Hulu should be cons considering? Hey, let's just merge into one. Let's take over the world. Or do y'all see it a different way? Do you think Disney has a chance to go as number one? I think it's inevitable. Elijah thinks it's doubtful. With if they just stay where they're at, um, let us know what you think in the comments below. All right. One more Disney piece of news before we move on to something else. Uh, there's this big game. Uh, what do we call it? The Big Spoon? <laughs> because you can't say <laughs> the other one. Otherwise, you might get demonetized. Uh, there was a Big Spoon commercial co for the Falcon and Winter Soldier. Now, we are big Marvel fans <laughs> in general. Uh, Elijah, I'm going to let you start off with this one. Your thoughts on this trailer? Falcon and Winter Soldier. Okay. So, you got... You know, you're coming out here, you got the Mandalorian. That looks pretty good. Good trailer, good good show. You come up to season two, you're like, oh, that's pretty darn good. And then they come out, and you're like, oh, they're coming out with a bunch of new Marvel Cinematic Universe movies. Okay, they did really good on Mandalorian. Let's see how they do. You come out, and they're like, oh, WandaVision. You love WandaVision. I love it. I think I actually enjoy WandaVision a little more than Mandalorian. Yeah, I mean, just that's high praise considering how good Mandalorian was. Yeah, and I love Mandalorian. And then you see you got Loki. Everybody loves Loki. You know, so that, ideally, that's going to be a really good show. Then you got Falcon and the Winter Soldier. You're not looking forward to it? I gotta say, I was <laughs> not impressed by the trailer. Really? Yeah, it just, it looked like just a Mission Impossible clone. There was there was nothing to really grip you, grip me at least to the story aside from it's it's Falcon. It's, it's got a lot of action. It's got the Falcon. It's got the Winter Soldier and Captain America's shield is there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but I already knew it would be there. You know, if you watch in game, yeah. you knew it. <laughs> so that's not there's not there's no plot devices like almost at all mentioned in the story other than. They're gonna go out in the Avengers. I can see that. Now, I fall on a completely different spectrum. I really enjoyed this trailer. Uh, I thought it was a lot of fun. Uh, to me, it looks like it's gonna be Marvel's version of Fast and Furious rather than Mission Impossible, uh, where it's just two guys, you know, just there were basically of, there were a lot of cars being being alpha males the whole time. And you know, call me, you know, I'm in. Uh, but I'm someone who doesn't really look at the uh, the main lines and all that. Like, I'm looking at backgrounds, and that's what got me excited. Uh, there's a scene in a bar, and I'm going to send this picture to Draven. And if I don't, he'll probably find it, because, you know, he's cool like that. Anyway, uh, and there's, like, scrolls in the background. So I think that would have been, like, finding people, like, who hunt scrolls from what we know from Captain Marvel and all that. Uh, but... That's just me generally theorizing. I was generally not looking forward to this show at all. <laughs> uh, and this is where I call, get cause a lot of heat. I'm not the hugest fan of the Captain America trilogy. I enjoy the movies for what they are. I'm just not the biggest fan of them. 
Uh, but, so, when those two characters were together, I was like, eh, I mean, I'm gonna watch it, but, eh, not that into it. Uh, but then I watched this trailer, I was like, I'm in. <laughs> I, I really enjoyed it. Uh, wait, did you have any excitement for this? I mean, don't get me wrong, I expect it to be at least decent. I mean, just base it on previous works, I'm expecting. If they put out good shows, I don't see why they just randomly drop the ball on this one. Yeah. But just the trailer, it didn't hook me. It didn't hook you. That's fair. But the thing is, we get this show, I think, three weeks after WandaVision's over. And this seems like a pattern that Disney's doing because Mandalorian Season 2 ended in December, and I think like three or four weeks passed and then WandaVision started. And now when WandaVision's over, another three or four weeks is going to happen until their next big show. So it's a good way to keep people subscribed <laughs> to go back to our last uh, conversation. But yeah, that's our thoughts on it. Did you enjoy the uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier trailer? Please leave a comment below and let us know your thoughts. All right. Topic number five. Let's get away from Disney for a little bit and let's go to Warner Brothers. Now... Here's some context before we get into this. There was an episode of The Kickback. It might be the first episode, wasn't it? First episode is Paranormal. Of The Kickback, not, just, oh, yeah, not, yeah. not the top 10 uh, franchises. Um, where it was announced that Godzilla and King Kong were going to fight. <laughs> and we immediately both picked sides. Well, first... I stand by this. Elijah just picked the other side just out of spite. False. For me. But, because he was like, I was like, so whose team are you on? Godzilla or King Kong? He goes, well, whose team are you on? And I go, Godzilla? And he goes, I am on Team King Kong. <laughs> so, to me, he just picked out of spite. But now I do firmly believe he is Team Kong all the way. <laughs> 100%. So, then it became this big thing, and then... Uh, one of our friends who also has a YouTube channel called Winstall, I believe that's how you pronounce it. I call it Whistle just to make him mad. <laughs> Subscribe to his channel if you have not already. It's a pretty good channel. It's much more bigger than mine. Not that much bigger, but bigger. Uh, and then he got involved. He was like, nah, Camp Kong's gonna win. And it became this big thing in our friend group that between Godzilla versus King Kong, we were like, oh, we get together, go to the theater for it and all these things and all that. Movie keeps getting pushed back. And now, we got a trailer. Granted, the trailer came out three weeks ago, but we haven't had a kickback in a long time. And now it's back to just me and you again. Elijah, I'm let you start off with this trailer as well. What'd you think? So you had Captain Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Eh, didn't grasp me too much. King Kong. <laughs> I just wanna, I, I wanna point out a few things. In this trailer, there was a lot of fighting. Makes sense, you know. There's a lot of fighting in a movie about two really big beasts fighting each other. Yeah. I love this trailer to start with. I'd like to point out one very important detail that I noticed, and that is that throughout the fighting, not once, not a single time, did the king of the beast, the true king of the beast, King Kong, get hit by Godzilla. But four times, count them. One, two, three, four times, Godzilla got socked in the face by those big monkey paws. Yeah. If that doesn't show who the clear victor of this competition is, I don't know what does. I truly don't. So are you really looking forward to the movie? I am. Yeah. No, that's gonna be good. Yeah, we're gonna get we're gonna get a big group of friends together. It might not be good, but it's gonna be good. Oh yeah, we're, we're gonna have fun with it regardless. I am really wanting to go to the theater to see it. But man, I don't know. Just just the thought of, you know, getting a bunch of friends together and like just have it at our place where we just kind of talk shit the whole time. You don't have to worry about anyone else. Oh, for sure. Because it's available both on HBO Max and the theaters at the same time. So having a big group of friends together and we're just talking shit the whole time. Like we get like a bet pool going on about what's going to happen. Also appeals to me very well. So we might go that route with it. I also really love the trailer. I also want to say this. There was another trailer that came out, the international trailer. You didn't watch that one. That's fine. I should have made you after that talk, though. Because in that, you do see Godzilla slap King Kong across the face. Granted, that is the only hit that he has. And also, 
Godzilla had Kong on his toes when he did his breath on the boat. And uh, Kong had to go, ah. and also, his name is Kong in this movie. He's not King Kong. Yeah, we're going to get into that in a little bit. But I also really love this trailer. I mean, freaking Kong just punching him in the face and hitting him, and he goes into the water. I was like, oh, God, this is exactly what I wanted. I am so hyped for this movie. <laughs> it's just, it's one of those, it's going to be one of those stupid fun kind of things. Yeah. Like, regardless of it. Because, I mean, I, I think we had this conversation about the Godzilla movie uh, a couple of years ago where we were just sitting there we were like, we don't really care about the people. Yeah, we just want to see monsters fight each other. We want to see monsters fight and maybe the people just kind of contribute to telling us what's going on. Yeah. But for the most part, it's just, I want to watch a big monkey. I want to I want to turn my brain I want to watch a big lizard fight each other. Yeah. I want to turn my brain off, and I just want to have fun. Now, do you think they're going to team up at the end, though? <laughs> or do you really think? What would they team up or... against? Didn't, it, didn't Godzilla, like, kill everything? Well, here's the thing. In Godzilla lore, and I'm getting my Godzilla lore really set, because that's the next Lemmy versus Limey's, is that we're going to do Godzilla, uh, Kong, Skull Island, and Godzilla King of the Monsters, so I'm getting my Godzilla uh, knowledge ready for it, is that there's other villains and it looks like it's going to be Mecha Godzilla in it. If you look at the background, well, first off, nine seconds in, you see Godzilla, but like he's red at his throat, and that's where Godzilla's throat is, and like all the uh, other concept arts. And also, there's a scene uh, when you know when he goes uh, when Godzilla wars in to Tokyo, and then it goes to one guy that, in a lab in the back. There is a blueprint of Mecha Godzilla. Is what I'm thinking it is. So I think they're gonna fight. I'm hoping they don't really hurt us, and the whole time it's not Godzilla, and that is actually Kong versus Mecha Godzilla. And then Godzilla shows up at the end to help Kong beat Mecha Godzilla. I'm hoping they actually fight, thinking like, "Oh no, you're trying to hurt me." And Godzilla's like, "You're trying to hurt me. I haven't done anything," and he's just trying to fight him back. But we also know there's a feud between them because like there was a war, and then the last two standing. Yeah. And they also mentioned that, you know, Godzilla's just hurting people for some reason and they don't know why kind of thing. Yeah, because in the previous movies, he is kind of built as an anti-hero. Like, no, he's here to help the humans. Now, all of a sudden, he's a change of behavior. Yeah. So... There's got to be something to that. There's got to be something to that. And I do think, like, they... I was do kind of hoping that Kong versus Godzilla was kind of like a Tom and Jerry where it was just on sight. They see each other. It's it's with throwing hands. But I do think like it's gonna be a big misunderstanding that Kong's like, dude, Godzilla's hurting people, so he attacks the real Godzilla, and Godzilla's like, bro, I haven't done nothing to you, and then he starts hitting Kong back. I think that's what's gonna happen, but we will see. Now, narrative-wise, I will say it does make sense, narrative-wise, for Kong to win, because he has yet to get the King moniker. He has yet to be called King Kong. The movie, his movie was called Kong Skull Island, and then the next one was Godzilla King of the Monsters. So I think Kong will win so he can get the mantle King and be King Kong. And Godzilla's like, well, my name's my name has God in it. So <laughs> be quiet. And then like they'll team up at the end and then they'll go their separate ways. But then maybe they'll fight each other again later on. Um but we will see. Uh, what do you think? Well, of course you think Kong's. He's win. he's a king in my heart. <laughs> so even if for some reason, the writers, you know, mess up and Godzilla wins. He's still, he's still the king in my heart. So sentimental. Um, all right, guys. So that's what we think. What do y'all think is going to happen? Do you think whose team are you on? Godzilla or King Kong? What? Uh, who do you think should be a victor narratively? And uh, what? What? What winner do you think will be the best narratively? I, I shouldn't ramble for as long as I do. All right. Sixth and final main topic today. Elijah, who's your favorite superhero? Oh, Batman? <laughs> He's up there. But no, it's it's our good boy, uh, Mr. Mr. Peter, Peter Pennywacker. Mr. Peter Parker? Spider-Man. Yeah, and he's also mine as well. Uh, I don't think there was a... I think I was, like, born into 
loving Spider-Man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Those, those characters, if you love from the start, you love them forever. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, have you enjoyed the Tom Holland series so far? Yeah, loved them. Yeah. I was always under the impression that Tobey Maguire is a great Peter Parker. Andrew Garfield was a great Spider-Man. But Tom Holland is a great incarnation of both. That's always been my thought process. And I mentioned Toby and uh, Andrew because there's been rumors going around that they're going to be in this third one. Because as most people know, the, T the Disney Plus show WandaVision, Spider-Man 3, which is going to have home in the title somewhere, home invasion, uh, run away from home, something like that, is going to be in the title. We all know that. Um, and Doctor Strange 2, or Doctor Strange into the Multiverse of Madness, are all one connected storyline. Now, I'm not going to spoil WandaVision, but in some things that happen in this show, to me, I'm like, okay, I can see why they come in. And also, what we know is that Jamie Foxx is going to be coming back as Electro, and Alfred Molina is coming back as Doc Ock. One from each perspective, from Andrew's movies and uh, Toby's movies. Now, there's also word that all the villains are going to be in it, but none of those are confirmed yet. Also, Toby and Andrew have not been confirmed. Sorry about that. It got cut off, and now it's restarting again. So, uh, at first, uh, Tom was asked about this, and uh, he was like, I don't know. Uh, they have a tendency to not do this because Tom Holland has been known to spoil the movies that he is in when he's not supposed to. <laughs> um... And he'd be like, I don't know, if, uh, I get to the movie and I see, oh, so that's who the tennis ball was. Now he's now he's doubled me down on it, like, now there's no way they're in it, because they would have told me by now, because that's a pretty big thing to keep from me. That's something I should probably know about. Fair. It's hard, it's hard, I mean, yeah, it's yeah. hard to keep an actor from somebody who's supposed to be acting with them. Especially your main character. <laughs> it's one thing if he was like a supporting role, but no, he is, this is his movie. So, the question is, do we believe him? <laughs> Did Tom Holland finally learn to lie? And they're actually going to be in it? Or should we take his word for it? Because no one from Sony or Marvel has said, yeah, no, they're in it. Elijah, I once again go to you. What do you think? The weird, the weird thing is just their choice of cast. You know? Them deciding that they're bringing in, you know, the old Electro and the old Doc Ock. They very specifically pick those two. It, it, does, it doesn't make any sense to me how, it, first off, just uh, from an audience perspective, you could see those two on the screen as those characters and not immediately reassociate them to their respective movies that they came from. You know, and their respective spider games that they came from. There's no way that you could see that Doc Ock and be like, that's, that's the wrong Spider-Man fighting him. Where's, my, where's the other Spider-Man? This isn't, this isn't Tom Holland's fight, you know? Yeah. Uh, that, that, that part makes me just think there's no reason that they shouldn't have the other two. The only thing I can imagine them doing is um, some sort of villain group up where some being, you know, because you got the Multiverse of Madness coming in, and maybe during the Multiverse of Madness, a bunch of Spider-Man villains get pulled in from different... Uh, you know, multiverses. One comes in from uh, Tobey Maguire's, one comes in from Andrews Garfield's, Doc Ock, Electro, maybe something like that happens. Sure. They all get together and just figure out they're just Spider-Man and they hate him. Yeah. Well, my thing is, is like, why stop there? <laughs> they're not gonna be... Let's get the Spider-Verse in here. Let's get um, uh, Miles Morales in there as well. Hell, let's get the PS4 Spider-Man in there. Let's I mean, just... part of it could also just be you know, maybe, I don't know why they wouldn't, but maybe Toby McGuire and Andrew Garfield just don't want to play the role. And so maybe they could have, be having trouble with that. Well, Andrew always wanted to play Spider-Man, so I highly doubt he does not want to play the role. He'll be like, just pay me whatever, I'll sign here. To me, from what I know about Andrew Garfield and that role. Toby, who's hiring Toby? I don't see like, hey, Toby... You want to work? <laughs> like, uh, that's what, that's how I see it. Now, here's my thing. He may not know. <laughs> uh, 
I don't know. I, I, I really don't think Tom Holland knows. <laughs> I mean, considering all the stuff he's let slip, they could just be like, everybody on Def Conrad don't tell him. Yeah. I mean, it could be that. And he's just the only one not, who doesn't know. Well, here's also my thing with it. Yes, Electro's coming in. Doc Ock's coming in. To me, I don't even think they're the main villains. I don't even think they're going to be in it for that much. Maybe five or ten minutes at most. Ten's too long. I think five will probably be the longest. It might be shorter than that, that, that we see them. I don't know who the main villain's going to be. I have a good idea, but it connects to WandaVision, and I don't want to spoil it for you until you watch the show. Um, and so my thing is, is that I think they will be in it. And if I'm Sony and if I'm Marvel, I'm not telling anyone. I'm not going to promote them at all. I'm not going to put them in a trailer. No, nothing. Because here's the thing. The moment you announce that they're in it, everyone's going to think they're big players. Yeah. Why wouldn't you? The moment you put them in a trailer, everyone's going to think they're big players. And why wouldn't you? Like, you see that, like, all three Spider-Man in a movie. I need to see this. And then you get to the movie, and they're only in it for maybe three minutes. It's going to be outrage. However, if you don't tell every, anyone, and the news is already there, I compare it to, like, when Undertaker was returning to WrestleMania at John Cena. I'm a huge wrestling fan. Now, bear with me. Right, 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 right with me on this for a little bit. That whole storyline that they did with Undertaker facing John Cena at WrestleMania is that Undertaker basically didn't answer the challenge at all. And they didn't promote Undertaker was going to be at WrestleMania at all. But we all knew he was going to be there. <laughs> it's Undertaker and WrestleMania. Sure enough, Undertaker shows up and he beats John Cena in two minutes. You didn't promote it at all. But you knew he was going to be there, and you were just happy that it was there and that it happened. Yeah, it was like fans loved it. And fans loved it. Fans went berserk. Although, if you do announce that it's Undertaker versus John Cena, which is a very high caliber match, you expect him to go 30 to 40 minutes. And you see the match is only two minutes, people are going to be outraged. I think we're in the same exact situation with Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield. I think they're already in the movie. And it's only going to be three minutes. I don't think we're going to get the meme of all the Spider-Man pointing at each other in real live action form. I think Tom Holland is just going to have a simple conversation with each one, and then that's going to be it for those Spider-Man. And that's it. So don't promote them. And then everyone expects them to be there. If they show up, cool. They're just happy that they're there. They don't show up, well, you never promote it, nothing's wrong. Yeah, I mean, you're basically, you're playing it safe at that point, which is smart, especially when you're dealing with, you know, beloved characters. Yeah. So what do you think? Do you think they should promote them, or do you think there'll be bigger roles since you've got I don't, other Spider-Men? I don't, well, I mean, that's the thing. We still don't know if there's other Spider-Men. Yeah. Spider-Man. Spider-Man. I don't know. <laughs> I don't like how that it sounds. It's weird. Um, but we still don't know if there's, you know, we're going to have the other two Spider-Man in there. So I don't see why promoting them at all is just a big deal in general, because I can't imagine that, again, it's like, it's like I came, it's like I said earlier, those two actors specifically belong to those two franchises in everybody's minds. So... I can't see why they would bring in those two actors to play, to play a big part in a completely different uh, Spider-Man franchise thing. Yeah. I see that. So I think I'm with you. I don't think they're going to be huge. Maybe it's a small team-up thing. Again, I still think maybe it's going to do something with the Doctor Strange movie. Oh, yeah. He's going to somehow play a part in that. Doctor, Maybe, Strange, Doctor Strange is in the movie. He has confirmed that he Yeah, I mean... <laughs> Doctor Strange and Spider-Man are old buds um, in, like, every iteration. Um, but, yeah, I I don't see them being huge. Yeah. All right, I guys. see them being awesome, though. And oh, yeah. It's, it's going to be really fun. Yeah. Once they all get on the screen together. A big it's problem. It's going to happen. <laughs> yeah, get all the villains on the screen together kind of thing. Yeah. Old school versus new school type of thing, all that. Yeah. Maybe we'll get our Sinister Six. Possibly. I don't know. I mean, we've got Mysterio. We've got... One uh, 
What do you think of the odds are that Tom Hardy's Venom is going to show up in this movie? I don't think it's going to happen. You don't think it's going to happen at all? No. I've, oh. I've, I've read multiple places that they want to just keep that separate. Well, well what it is now, Kevin Feige, who now is the producer, well, is now. He's always been the producer of Marvel. And he was very, like, there were two different things. And then there was the whole Spider-Man drama that happened where Sony took back Spider-Man after Disney asked for way too much, in my personal opinion. I think Disney handled that wrongly. Then they got back together and Kevin Feige said, well, Spider-Man's interesting because now, because, you know, he's the only one that's in two different universes. And in the Morbius trailer, Michael Keaton's Vulture, which was in the MCU, shows up in that trailer. So who knows? Who knows? I, I don't know. But guys, that's just what our thoughts of it. What do you think of the odds are that Toby and Andrew will show up in it? Do you think Tom Hardy's Venom's going to show up in it? What are your thoughts on the Spider-Verse as a general? Do you think this keeps going? I really do think after this Spider-Man deal, Marvel's done with Spider-Man, they will tell Spider-Man's story and he'll go back to Sony and rock his own universe. And I, and I think they will keep Tom Holland for a while. Uh, and what are your thoughts on that? Please let us know down in the comments below. Alright guys, and that will do it for us here on the Lemon Kickback. This was fun. I, I miss doing this quite a bit. It was good. We'll, we'll definitely need to do this uh, uh, more. Uh, you can make sure to subscribe, like, of course comment. I'm going to be preaching it the whole time. And follow me on the social medias, wherever Draven decides to put them. Um, and we will... Elijah, no, no, because he'll keep moving it. He does that. <laughs> um... And now we'll do it for here, guys. And until next time, we will see you here at Lemon Studios.